Hey everybody, David Art Becker here with Becker Art, and today I want to talk to you about style. I had an artist friend ask me, she has asked me about how do I create a style. Her teachers have told her many times to develop your style, and so I just want to let you know in this video how you create a style or how you pick subject matter and make it type of like a style in a certain style. All right, and so we'll go with Car first. Car is one of um, the artist friends who's on my Facebook group. And she had asked that question. She asked, you know, why, how can I develop a style? And I just had to tell her, and I told her to watch my newsletter this week and the, and the fact that she already has a style. Everybody who starts with a watercolor as the medium, after you learn how to use the medium, you instantly have a style. It may be a beginner style. It may be a more advanced style as you go on and work more and more into your painting, but you will have a style right from the get-go <laughs> it may be a like i said maybe an amateur look because you don't know all the ins and outs yet of the medium but certain first thing you want to do is learn the medium that's the first and foremost thing that you have to do when you're um, starting with watercolor is you have to learn how to use the medium and then there's also you got to think about it what paper are you using what um, watercolors are you using are you using um, tubed uh, you know um, cakes um, a lot of that has to determine, and that'll determine a lot about how you're putting it onto the paper, who your teachers are, and all that things will develop your style. And so, like I said, your style from the get-go will be a certain look, and it may not be an advanced look, it may not be a certain way, it'll look very traditional, because when you get taught first, you're going to be learning fundamentals, and those fundamentals will look very beginner like and so as you develop your style which is what um, she had asked is that it's basically all you do is you just keep on working your your watercolor until you get to a point where you feel comfortable with that kind of style so if you look at her work right here on the page right now her work is very clean um, very you know very clean looking no big you know messiness to it the washes are very clean and the pots and uh, the pots are a different subject matter but they still have the same type of look where you put down the watercolor in a certain way and again the papers look all pretty close to the same like if you use a hot a cold press and a hot press it's two different styles that you'll get out of that when you're using a hot press a lot of times it'll have a lot of hard edges if you use a cold press with rough paper that or as a rough you can also get a lot of texture so it all depends on what you and how you use your watercolor after you learn how to use the medium itself. You first have to learn how to use the medium and then your style will be very much beginner looking like. And as you move on and you start learning about composition and lights and darks, and then more and more it'll get look more professional because you'll have that in part of, as part of your style. And not so much but as part of your style, but as your way of using the watercolor itself. So I have a few artists I'm gonna go over here after cars here and so let's go with like Winslow Homer I'm going to show you a couple of Winslow Homers so there's style of the artist who what they do you know how they use their watercolor and what kind of paper what kind of paints they use you know if some paints um, have more granules in it and and some are more colorful than others and so what color scheme do you use and all that kind of things determine your style and that's all just automatic you don't have to go and make say that you have to make a certain style you may want to just um, paint a lot and then also create a subject matter like get a subject matter that's closely related so here was a homer in part of his life he lived in the adirondacks and he was painting a lot of adirondack scene right and then he also went to bermuda once in a while to do his other kind of work and if you look they look kind of differently um, the pictures themselves so you have the the Adirondacks which is on the left here and so if you look at that Winslow Homer left with the fisherman and the boater the, the guide I think it's called the guide this picture on the bottom left here and so that's his time when he was in the Adirondacks but it kind of has the same look on how they handled it and it also looks kind of the same kind of materials now the colors are very much different because it's different subject matter so in the Bermuda, he used a lot of light blues and it's very light, very bright. And the aqua colors that he has of the, of the bluish greens and the blues are a little bit different from the Adirondacks. So I would say that if you are developing a style, you also want to pretty much develop a subject matter. 
So here, and he did a bunch of paintings from a Bermuda, and you can actually tell them, if you just type in Winslow Homer for a Google search, you'll find that many of the the, the scenes are very much to that that particular part of, of his life and where he went. So in the Adirondacks, there are a lot of, like this, um, with the with the fishermen and the guides, and you're gonna get a bunch of them that in his paintings, and it's a lot darker. You know, if you look, it's a lot darker because of the the foliage and the trees. Where in Bermuda, it's all about the water and the sailboats and the boats and the and the self itself. Bermuda is just the brightness of the white rocks and stuff. And I've only picked two different subject matters, but it is all Bermuda. So the subject matter is not so much there's a fisherman or there's a um, a scene with a boat and a boat and people. So it, it could be different, but because it's in Bermuda, that makes it what's the um, things that holds it together as one subject matter. Subject matter is Bermuda. Here's the Adirondacks. And so, but the style of painting is the same, which is what he learned how to use the, the medium. All right, let's go to, now we're gonna know one of my students, Carol. Cards by Carol. Carol is one of my students still to this day. And she had followed me from Chicago and now she's up here in McHenry taking my class. And um, she does cards and she's developed her own kind of very um, loose style, very loose style, very colorful. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny because people think that you have to make something look very professional or like a postcard, or not like a postcard, but like a photograph. And that's not, that's not true. If you look at, um, uh, what um, I'm trying to think of a name, um, Grandma Moses, you know, if you look at her work, it is art, but it's not looking like maybe like a sergeant. And so it doesn't have to look like a certain artist. Cards by Carol is um, a certain look that she had developed and you have to be very um, proud of it and you just got to go with it. You know, it's not the same as like my work and you actually don't want your my as a student of mine, I don't want you to have a look like mine, though that's usually what happens is because when I'm teaching and when I took my teacher and instructor, Irving Shapiro, my work would look like his, right? Because he's, I'm following what he's saying. I'm um, copying his photographs, but I feel as a teacher and I myself right now, what I do is I don't teach a style. I teach you how to use the medium. I teach about fundamental things like composition and lights and darks and patterns and like that. And you'll create your own style. And like I said, everybody has a style as soon as you start. It's not a style though that maybe what you are gearing towards the end for. Like you may want to paint like a John Singer Sargent and you want to get your work like that. But um, you, you really like Carol has decided that this is this kind of style she likes and she sells tons and tons of cards this way too. And, um, it's a very neat look and it's, and when she puts them on cards, um, they look phenomenal and they're not like my style. They're not like anybody else's style. They're her style, Carol's style. And her subject matter is a lot of times from Chicago. She's from Chicago. So you'll see a lot of scenes from Chicago and she makes, she wants it to be that way because she's selling cards in Chicago. So that's what you want to do too. Is like, it may not be a style per se. It's always a style, but then you want to take a subject matter and then just go with that subject matter. And it really helps it to look similar too. Because if you're going to a gallery or something where they want you to have a style, sometimes it could just be a subject matter too and have, the style doesn't have to be so right on, but usually subject matter, or I mean style, will kind of lend itself to itself because of what you're pa painting and because that's the way you paint. All right, and so let's go to the next one. And this is, um, this last week, we were copying one of Elvaro, Elvaro's paintings. And he, if you look at his paintings, that's another thing about style, it's having consistency. So when you learn how to use the medium and you're constantly using it the same way over and over, and then you're using the same subject matter, you're gonna get really good at that particular subject matter. And with the, using those colors and the way you use the medium, it'll be very consistent. You know, So get some consistency in your work and it doesn't matter what subject matter, because if you look at this um, subject matter I have here, you have a boat scene, a city scene. I mean, this is bo dry dock boats that are next to a city. And then here we have an interior and he does a lot of interiors with people but all his paintings had that same feel and same look, same style, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. And the style is, that's just the way he paints. 
he doesn't know how to paint any other way because of all the paintings that he's done. He, I, you always will um, change your style as you go along. I think he used to use a lot more colors when I, um, I think I met him way back and he was a lot more colorful. Now a lot of his paintings, you go to his website, they're very, a lot of dark, almost black, a lot of neutral tints in his work. And it's like really dark but with a little touch of color here and there. And so it, it develops, your style develops, but it's just painting. And so you'll, like I said again before, that you will have a style as soon as you begin. And if you paint a lot, it's always just, that's your style. And then the subject matter sometimes will change your style a little bit only because if it's a change of subject matter, it'll kind of look differently. And as you're growing as a painter, you will have a lot of different styles. Or if you're following me, I kind of don't teach you styles and so there's a lot of different subject matter and I actually try different styles to show you different things so um, that's where I have a problem for myself is that I when I'm doing my my regular paintings then I do have a style or a, a subject matter that I'm going going with but if I'm teaching I'm not worried about teaching you a certain style I'm teaching you all kinds of styles and all kinds of ways of applying the pigment to the paper and going with fundamentals. So let's go into our next one is John Selmanen. And um, John, who wins many, many awards, but his style, I remember way back uh, also when I was going to Dillman, started at Dillman's, his work didn't have that little, little intricate thing that he does with, I think he must um, airbrush, not airbrush it, but um, uses an atomizer and a lot of masking fluid. Um, I don't know how he does his style yet, but it doesn't really matter. But when, as soon as I see one of his works, you notice that it's his work right away, right? Because the subject matter is a lot of times uh, cities, people in the cities. So that's one of the things they look at. But also the way he puts his pigment down is always consistent to what he does on everything he does. He's just recently done like a, a scene from above looking down on umbrellas and it has the same kind of feel. And so once you start a certain kind of look, then you just keep on going with that. And that's not something I think he, because he also does abstracts and they don't look like this. So then it's a different subject matter. So if he's doing an abstract, you don't get the same kind of subject matter as this and same kind of look as his city scenes. So the style doesn't have to be so much as that for that scene, for that subject matter, you should probably do a subject matter that's together as a, as a, compilation of a bunch of paintings that are the same type of thing same kind of look and when he does his abstracts it's kind of like it's the abstract look and then if he does a bunch of them then it looks neat because you can have a like basically a um a, a gallery showing of all that work so and then we'll get and finally is my work and like i was saying before i don't have a style i feel as much as i have more of a certain subject matter so I plan on teaching you a lot about the medium from on, when you're doing it on Yupo or if you're doing it on paper, black paper. So if you look at this one right here, this is watercolor done on black paper. This is on white paper. And this is done more freely. This one is a city scene and I'll do a country scene and I'll do people and I will do everything. And that's only because I'm teaching you. And for that, I don't feel I, I, I'm not teaching you a style, I'm teaching you um, ability to do the watercolors. And if you look over on the, on the right over here, that's a scene that I've done recently. I'm creating subject matter. So I'm doing a lot of entertain, enter, entertainment type of pieces where I'm doing bands and singers and actors and, and things like that, dancers. And so that's what I'm kind of doing as subject matter. Now, when I'm doing those, I'm not thinking about how to teach somebody that and so I'm using my style that I would normally use. And I'm trying to develop that style too by just making some things a little bit more abstract, soft edged. And so that's what I work on in my work that I do in my studio. This work over here, these three are works that I do as lessons and demonstrations. So that is not really my style. I'm trying to teach you. And so that's more of my students or, or my um, class works and so my demonstrations and I do have a lot of them and they're fine as paintings but I don't consider them as being what my style is <laughs> it's just a, it's a class work and so I'm trying to show you all different kinds of styles and so that's my problem when it comes to going to like a gallery 
I can't show this. I can show this work, but it's not really what I want to show. I want to show a style or subject matter. Like I said, and right now I'm doing subject matter of entertainers. And so that's what I had recently done a couple of years ago. And I'm still going to have the show is of um, the armed forces. And so those had a lot of different styles in it, but we had the subject matter was all the same. So the best thing to do when it comes to style is just keep on working your um, watercolor until you become a professional at handling the watercolor. You, you, the style will develop itself it, because it's what you take as classes, what you've learned in each painting that you do, and also the subject matter that you pick. I would then, after, after you get to a certain point where you're no longer learning how to do the medium, is pick yourself a subject matter or um, something that you want to make a series of. So maybe it's painting outdoors and you just want to do plain air and that could be a style and then you'll learn how to do a style and just show that work that you did outside and do it consistently and that will be, create that style for that particular subject matter. So the basic thing to do is not worry about, and I would tell Carr, is not to worry about your style. Just pick a subject matter and do a few of those to make a series and you get really good at that series and I, I bet I'm going to bet that most people that have created a style for themselves didn't start out with that style right in the beginning. They just started doing something until they found something they liked and then they stuck with it and then developed that style or that subject matter and developed it to where it is now. I think of myself as right now following what other artists are doing because I still have to kind of develop a style that says, oh, that's a Dave Becker. Because when you see works like Alvaro or anybody of those famous artists like Winslow Homer, <laughs> Masters, they developed a style because they weren't even thinking about it. They just went to an area, painted, and didn't think about the style because the style just created itself because that's just how they paint. But it was the subject matter more that showed them what it was that made it look like him, like the Winslow Homers of the Bermuda and also the Adirondacks. Those you can tell, as soon as you see that work, you, you think, oh yeah, that's a Homer or Alvaro's, you see the, the black that he's using in there, you know right away the scene and how he does the style. So again, don't worry about so much about style. Just work your medium until you feel that it's something you want to do and take it to a certain subject matter. And you'll do fine. And Cara, if I, like I said in the beginning here when I showed your work, that is a style already. And so just go with that. If you want to do flowers like that, just do a bunch of them and just keep on going with that. And you can develop them together. Maybe you go from flowers to put flowers and pots together. <laughs> and then you go on from there. And if you want to do landscapes, then have a certain look in your landscapes like this. It could be it could be tight. It could be tighter. It could be hard edged. It can be, you know, it could be anything. And if you look at those hyper realists, they have a certain look and that's they should stick with that until they feel like they develop to the next step. Maybe they want to add more soft edges to their to their um, hyper realism. So it's all a process of being a beginner to being a professional. It's just keep on working and you'll create your style on its own. You don't have to worry so much about a style or even the subject matter. But at a certain point, you do want to kind of th think, OK, I want to do a series of something. And it just helps you create that style and also that subject matter that you want to do. All right. Subject matter helps out a lot because then it's sort of like now I'm doing a series of, of entertainers. If I do enough of them and that's all you see me doing, then you'll start noticing that, oh, that's Dave Becker, the guy that does all those series of entertainers. All right. Just something I want to explain. I thought it would be better to explain it. Um, to you on a live video then write this all up because it's, that would be a lot to write up and I can just show you too what I was uh, talking about when it comes to the different the different subject matter that there is. So when you're looking at certain things like here's my mine again like this uh, on the right is these right here are more my studio works and those are what I'm kind of going towards and so I want to make my work a little bit more abstract than this but I'm working on that but that's going to be more in tune of what I'm doing for a style and a subject matter where this I always remember if a teacher shows some of his demos that is not his studio work and that is not as usually his style though it isn't for me but I think some teachers who are more big artists they will show their style in their demonstrations too but it's not studio work because you're working in front of a, in front of um, people and students 
And so there's questions being asked. You're going faster. You're maybe doing something that's not the way you would do it in your studio. So it don't, don't look at the work that from a classroom to be as much style as it is when you see the original work of that artist's work. All right. So until this Thursday, um, I'll see you then. When we'll do a, a do a scene yet. I'm not sure what it is we're going to be painting, but I'm going to maybe try to pick a certain kind of style. Like last week, we took an Alvaro an Alvaro, and we did a painting kind of like his style. Um, this week, we're going to try something like that again. I think we're going to maybe try to, to get close to a style of another artist, a famous maybe a master, like maybe an Andrew Wyeth or a or a, a Homer. We'll see. We'll try to make that style look like that style. But also, probably the subject matter, too, helps out a lot of that. All right. Until then, we'll see you then. Bye-bye.